One. Hey everybody, how's life treating you? I'm Russ Robo and welcome back to Robot Arena 2 DSL Mods Tournament of Robotic Champions. This week we've got a few fine competitors. The winners from last week are Team Prehistorics Roly Poly versus Team Dragons Ninja Assassin. Team Black Storm's Bot 205 versus Team North Polar's Tip of the Iceberg. Then Team Hex's Grim Chopper versus Team Steelyard Dog's Mangy Mutt. And Team Megaton's Poison Stinger versus Team The Scrapper's 360 Arc Pounder. So without further ado, let's get right down to it and see who all wins these matches. Okay, let's start the first one off right about now. Welcome to the parking lot arena. Watch out for falling objects as you maneuver through the parking lot. Be do, careful do, that you don't do, get hit do, by a ton of bricks. Do, do, do. We're seeing some interesting mm -hmm. robot designs tonight. Alrighty. There they go. Ooh. It looks like Ninja Assassin is starting right off with heavy hits. There come the there come the cinder blocks down on top of Ninja Assassin. So Roly Poly just narrowly avoiding those. Ooh, and Roly Poly getting the heavy hits in. Looks like we've got Roly Poly at 5,323. Ninja Assassin with 1,545. Roly Poly really racking up those points, but Ninja Assassin seems to have the advantage now as Roly Poly is on his back, being counted out. Looks like he's trying to go up the arena, uh, the, well, not necessarily the arena sidewalls. Woo! And a heavy hit by Roly Poly sends Ninja Assassin spiraling out of control. Ninja Assassin on fire now. Looks like his engine is being heavily damaged. D can he self right from this? Can he come back? Looks like he's taking some CPU damage and Roly Poly pushes him into the corner. Roly Poly pushing back, fighting back hard with those axe heads. Ninja Assassin still on fire. Roly Poly up with 8,000 points now, nearly 9,000. And Ninja take Ninja Assassin takes a flying dash hit to the sky. Roly Poly really showing him what he's made of. Oh, and another hit, another uppercut by <laughs> Roly Poly sends Ninja Assassin doing a barrel roll. Ninja Assassin's best bet now is to let Roly Poly be counted out. He, he'll never catch up with that amount of points. Not in 1 minute and 25 seconds with no weapons. It doesn't seem like the Ninja Assassin realizes that his weapon is gone. If he hits Roly Poly too many times in just the right way, he'll he'll flip Roly Poly back onto his... Uh, he'll flip Roly Poly back onto his wheels and Roly Poly will take this match. Ooh, you shouldn't have done that Ninja Assassin. Roly Poly's back now and he's gonna make you pay for it. Ninja Assassin pushes back Roly Poly up against the edge. But without a primary weapon, it looks like Ninja Assassin never stood a chance. Woo! What a match. Okay, let's get the... Let me get that written down and we'll be right back. And we're back. That was an excellent match between Roly Poly or Team Prehistoric's Roly Poly versus Team Dragon's Ninja Assassin. Last week we saw some interesting matches, but the back and forth was a bit fast paced. So, thanks to uh, viewer suggestion, we'd be doing best two out of three rounds. Now, we've got one so far for Roly Poly. Can he get another round two in a row for the win to move on to the next round? Welcome Let's find out. I've gotten Roly Poly's. His. Basically, I do a tally. I'll just do one slash next to the robot that wins on the. Tournament roster. Actually, I need the. Can I control tab? There, now I can see it. Up, 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 up. It's terrible. And we've got our match starting out with Roly Poly and Ninja Assassin. Ninja Assassin getting in those heavy hits just like last time, flipping Roly Poly down onto his backside. Ooh, and Roly Poly getting flipped all over the place. Let me get that camera angle there. Ninja Assassin pushing Roly Poly back up against the back against the wire mesh of the sidewalls there. Roly Poly taking some heavy damage. Ninja Assassin already at over 8,000 points. Already surpassing Roly Poly's uh, total from the previous match. Roly Poly getting counted out now. I love it. I love the AI in this match. Look, he knows now. 
Ninjas, it's almost as if he remembered the last round. Oh, that's good. I'm glad I recorded this live. Well, I do all of them live, but do you see this? It's as if he, re he remembered the last round. Ninja Assassin, with 8,245 points, gets his, um, gets his first win, so that's one and one. Let me get that written. Oh, man, it's like he remembered the last round. He even counted them out like I suggested. <laughs> Can they hear me? Anyway, I'll get that right, written right down, and I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. We're one and one for Team Prehistorics Roly Poly and Team Dragons Ninja Assassin. Who's going to win the best two out of three, the final round, to take home the, well, not necessarily the gold. It's so exciting, I thought it was a championship, but it's just, they're just fighting for the right to go to the semifinals. Or, uh, the finals. <laughs> oh, I'm also going to be making a new tournament uh, bracket for the losers bracket. We've already got two entries from last week, if you remember correctly. Round one's uh, winner from the losers bracket last week was Team Sparks Broke, and the winner from round two was me as Stingray 2. So I'll be making up a new tournament for the losers of each round. So, without further ado, let's get to this final fight. And find out which one of these bots will come out on top. The crowd is sitting on the edge of their seats. Be careful that you don't get hit by a ton of bricks. Ah, it's good. I've never felt such a cold chill. As oh, I felt yeah, I feel a cold chill. These two bots, they're learning. It reminds me of a chicken run, Mrs. Tweedy. They're organized. And we've got Roly Poly coming in hot and heavy, just like last round. Ninja Assassin flipping him right over, trying to get that control. Ooh, but Roly Poly scores a few good hits on Ninja Assassin's main weapon. If Ninja Assassin loses his primary weapon, he's in trouble. Ooh, and he takes an uppercut to the jaw. Sends him spiraling down into the barrels, into the corner. Roly Poly's pulling no punches. Ooh, and another uppercut. And a third, and Roly Poly finish it just as just as fast, almost as if he remembered the last round. These two bots are hating each other. Roly Poly takes it home for um, the right to move on to the to the finals. Woo! <laughs> so much hate, so little time. Roly Poly takes it home with 9,146 points. I'll get that written down, and we'll be right back. And we're back. That was an exciting last round. I hope you're excited because these bots are ready to go at it. We've got Team Black Storms, Bot 205 versus Team North Polar's Tip of the Iceberg. Best two out of three rounds. Let's start round one and see what these bots can do. Welcome to the parking lot this proves to be an interesting match. If I had to take a guess, I'd say Tip of the Iceberg has an advantage as long as he can score heavy hits with his main weapon against Bot 205's. I'd say either wheels or main weapon. He has... Tip of the Iceberg has a scoop which is going to help him greatly against that blade. Against that saw blade. If he can use the scoop to push leverage against Bot 205, oh! But he doesn't want to wind up flipped over. He can use his main weapon to self right, but if Bot 205 keeps him in the corner, he could lose control based on just not having enough points to finish the round. We've got Bot 205 racking it up right now with 5,000 points, headed towards 6,000. He's scoring some heavy hits against the underside of that chassis. Tip of the iceberg's gotta get out of there, or he's gonna he's done. He's done. We've got Bot 205's taking it home with 7,201 points. Let me get that tallied up and we'll be right back. Alright, and we're back. Right back into it. Right back into the the heart of the storm here. Tip of the iceberg, bot 205, best two out of three rounds. Can bot 205 get underneath the underside of that chassis on tip of the iceberg to take it home. Let's find out. Enter now, if this match is anything like the last match, tip of the iceberg might remember exactly what his weakness away. was in the last round and fight up against it. I would really be interested to see if that's actually a thing. I don't think their AI works that way, but boy, what a, convi what a coincidence in that first round. That was very exciting. Definitely worth the watch. Okay, we've got two fierce competitors here ready to go at it, and let's see them tangle. 
Tip of the Iceberg scores a heavy hit against that main weapon. Looks like Bot 205's pushing Tip of the Iceberg towards the Cinder Block. Cinder Blocks are going to be coming down right about now and hits both bots for heavy damage. Bot 205 racking it up with over 4,000 points. Mmm, nice. Good thing we went to best two out of three rounds because Team Blackstorm's Bot 205 finishes it fast with 4,279 points for the win and the move on to the finals. I'll get that written down real quick and we'll be right back. Alright folks, that was some exciting footage in the last couple of rounds. Now we've got the other side of the board with Team Hex's Grim Chopper versus Team Steel Yard Dog's Mangy Mutt. Let's see what these bots can do. I'm very interested to see if Mangy Mutt can actually take it home without an offensive primary weapon. Unless that, unless he has spikes underneath. He was racking up some points in the last week's uh, round somehow, but I'm not quite sure how. He may have some hidden spikes underneath that chassis shovel, but we'll have to find out when we start the match. Alright, taking a close look at Mangy Mutt, seeing what all he's got on him. Be careful hmm. that you don't get hit by a ton of bricks. I've never felt such a cold chill as I felt You certainly can't miss the spikes on him. Okay. He may be dealing damage with the Ah, oh, I see how it is. Okay. Ooh, and the match starts off with some heavy hits from both bots. We've got Meiji Mutt trying to get those score hits on the bottom chassis. A Grim Chopper, Grim Chopper with 602, Mangy Mutt with 94. <clears throat> oh, Mangy Mutt pushing Grim Chopper back towards the cinder blocks. This could get bad for Grim Chopper if he lets those cinder blocks come down on his main weapon. Ooh, Grim Chopper scores a pretty heavy hit against Mangy Mutt's, uh, Mangy Mutt's chassis and pushes him back out into the arena, away from the cinder blocks. Mangy Mutt apparently trying to push either push Grim Chopper either out of the arena or into the cinder blocks. Now, the way Meiji Mutt's weapon works is it looks like part of his plow shovel is actually just a regular like shovel, like a scoop shovel right there. But the the outer two edges might actually be axe blades turned on their sides, I'm not sure. We've got Grim Chopper really racking it up right now with over 2,000 points. It looks like this could go to Grim Chopper unless Mangy Mutt can do something about that primary weapon. Mangy Mutt now in on the side of Grim Chopper. He needs to be careful of those spikes. Good, good. He's got him up on underneath his side there. Oh, and let's see. Oh, he's not going to let himself ride. He's trying not to. Okay, Grim Chopper doing an excellent job of self riding with that primary weapon just as was designed. Meiji Mutt doesn't want to let him have it though. He's going to try to flip him over again. And into the cinder blocks. Meiji Mutt pushes. Ooh, and just a barely a miss. But it does manage to deal some damage to Grim Chopper's main weapon. If, cinder, if Grim, Meiji Mutt can get it to go off again, he might actually be able to take this home. Meiji Mutt struggling. Putting in a real fight here, a real effort by Meiji Mutt. If I had to give him points on control, I'd, I'd definitely give him the control in this match as he pushes Grim Chopper into the next set of cinder blocks. Let's see if it's going to come down. No, it doesn't look like it. Yes, Meiji Mutt definitely the controller in this match. Trailing at 7,000, or excuse me, trailing at 735 points. He pushes Grim Chopper into the second set of cinder blocks. It's not coming down yet. He's waiting for it. Ooh, he's lining him up. Ooh, and Grim Chopper scores a heavy hit against Mangy Mutt's primary shovel. Mangy Mutt needs to be careful. He's in he's in the cinder block zone. They could come down. Grim Chopper still scoring those heavy hits. This is a long-standing match. We've only got 15 seconds left. Somebody's getting counted out. Careful, you're in the cinder block zone. Ooh, I'm not sure why those ones aren't coming down. Oh! One of them's a dud. It looks like the cinder blocks for that one isn't loaded, and the cinder blocks for the one on the opposite side is. Oh, and the countdown comes down to zero. As we've got Team Grim Choppers, or Team Hex's Grim Chopper taking it home with 6,765 points. Very interesting. I'd actually very much have to give Meiji Mutt a lot of points for control in that match. What do you guys think? Uh, Grim Chopper or Meiji Mutt in that one? 
obviously since I don't have time to uh, let's see I pre-record the matches so I'll put um, I'll put like a question mark for round one next to Grim Chopper because he won based on points but I'd really give Manji Mutt the point a lot of a lot more points based on control which would really even them out let me know what you think uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below but um, let me put a question mark for round one next to Grim Chopper and we'll be right back all right and we're right back folks with Team Hex's Grim Chopper, Team Steel Yard's Mangy Mutt, St Team Steel Yard Dog's Mangy Mutt. Let's see what all they can do. Enter the parking lot arena. Watch out for falling objects as you hmm. maneuver through the parking Definitely lot. interesting match last Be round. That you don't get Mangy Mutt really, really showing a lot of control. Okay, we've got, we've got these some bricks rocks. loaded on the top of the. Um, on the top of the scaffolding there. I'd really like to see if they're always loaded with one missing or what. Okay, and the bots come in. Meiji Mutt's already going for control. Yes, and look at that. Um, isn't that the same setup? No, no. Yes, it's the same setup from last time. So I'm not sure if it's random with the um, cinder blocks placed always at the left and right being loaded and the ones at the far... Um, as you're looking at them left, uh, being duds. Looks like Meiji Mutt's trying to get, uh, great team hex, oh, Meiji Mutt's trying to get Grim Chopper into the cinder blocks. He's pushing him away now, trying to get up, get up underneath him, flip him over. Grim Chopper's trying to score them heavy hits. He's not getting the heavy hits like he was last round. We've got... Grim Chopper at 1,000. Oh, now at 2,000 points after a heavy hit right after I said that. Oh, he's getting the heavy hits against that primary scoop on Meiji Mutt. If it comes off, Meiji Mutt will definitely be in trouble. Oh, and another heavy hit. You can hear that one coming from Grim Chopper right there. If that primary scoop comes off of Meiji Mutt, he'd be in big trouble because his main body will be completely exposed to that heavy, devastating weapon. We've got Meiji Mutt with 693 points pushing back against Grim Chopper, but Grim Chopper still scoring the steady points with that spike on the side. Almost to 5,000 now. Grim Chopper's getting flipped over, and the cinder blocks, ooh, come right down on top of Grim Chopper, uh, scoring a heavy hit. Ooh, Team Steel Yard Dogs is definitely happy about that last, that last push there. They've got one more set of cinder blocks to try to damage... Ooh, Grim Chopper with if they can actually get him over there. Some excellent driving by Team Steel, uh, Team Steel Yard Dogs. Grim Chopper still scoring the heavy hits, still getting the small points with those spikes on the side. Meiji Mutt pushing Grim Chopper over to the fence now, trying to get him locked up on the fence. Maybe count him out. Maybe get him. Maybe get him stuck on the side. That primary. Ooh, nice flip by Grim Chopper. That primary weapon is saving his bacon right now. It might just give him the win in this round. If Meiji Mutt can actually get him over to that second set of cinder blocks, he might be able to... Oh! Ah, I see, I see. Looks like Meiji Mutt... Ooh! Wow! Coming in for the heavy speeded hits. It's interesting what Meiji Mutt can actually do once he gets a good running start. Meiji Mutt pushing, uh, pushing Grim Chopper into the previous cinder blocks. Getting them all up in Grim Chopper's way might get him jammed up in Grim Chopper's weapon. Grim Chopper not being able to flip himself over right now would be devastating to his progress. We've got Grim Chopper with 7,800, almost, almost 8,000 points. Oh, man. And again, another close call round. Mangy Mutt, definitely, definitely the, the, the control leader in that round. Grim Chopper scoring heavy hits. Very interesting match between these two. These two were set up very interestingly. Um, I'm going to put another question mark for round two next to Grim Chopper and uh, let you guys vote on who you think is actually going to take home the win for the um, the primary the primary finals. It's very interesting between these two bots. So I'll get that written down and we'll be right back. Alright everybody, and we're back with Team Megaton's Poison Stinger versus 
Team The Scrappers 360 Arc Pounders in the semi-finals. Let's find out what these bots can do. This proves to be an interesting match. If I had to take a professional standpoint at this, I see that 360 Arc Pounder really has a lot of reach advantage against Poison Stinger. If he can get up to spinning speed and get heavy hits on those tires, he might be able to take it home before Poison Stinger can actually get his spikes close enough to deal real damage to 360 Arc Pounder. But if Poison Stinger actually manages to damage one of those wheels to the point where it comes off, that might give him the round. So let's see what these bots can do. Welcome to the parking lot arena. We've got a great match coming your I way. I do this believe evening. so. Hmm. Be careful that you don't get hit by a So it seems race. like the cinder blocks are always the same. The that would be really nice if there was a you know if they were random. That would be very interesting. Both both bots starting slightly in midair for some reason, not sure why. 360 Arc Pounder really starting way up there. Ooh, and a heavy hit from 360 Arc Pounder. He comes in at full spinning speed just like I was hoping. Going a little bit wild right now, but still scoring those really heavy hits against Poison Stinger. Poison Stinger with 5,000 points already. No, no, that's Arc Pounder. 360 Arc Pounder with 5,000 points. 9,000 now. The hits are so real, the heavy hits. Woo, that heavy hits. 360 Arc Pounder getting heavy hits against those tires and taking out the main weapons on Poison Stinger. This is the same problem I had with him. He's ridiculous. Oh my goodness, and the knockout hits. Poison Stinger on fire now, smoking, heavily damaged. It doesn't look like he's going to be able to bring this back. Just getting close to 360 Arc Pounder right now is, ooh, spelling death. 360 Arc Pounder right now, uh, spinning himself into the cinder block traps and apparently trying to fly away on his main weapon right now. Uh, one more hit and I think it's over. Poison Stinger with an impressive 9,000 points though, really putting in that serious effort. 360 Arc Pounder, 17, ooh, 17, th eight, ooh, 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 good gravy those hits. 18,232 points. No wonder I couldn't win. My goodness, okay. Well, <laughs> there's no vote needed there. Uh, that's definitely 360 Arc Pounder, so I'll get that written down and we'll be right back. Alright, everybody, and we're back with Team Megaton's Poison Stinger versus Team The Scrapper's 360 Arc Pounder in the best two out of three rounds. 360 Arc Pounder's already got one win. Let's see if he can do what he did last turn again to try to take it home for the win. Enter the parking lot Starting in the air again, 360 Arc Pounder. I'm not evening. sure if that's a problem or not. Be careful and his back scoop that's supposed to help him um, keep from flipping over, I guess, disappears at some point for some reason. Poison Stinger, considering what he was up against, really did very well, though. Okay, we're getting ready. Watching that camera angle. Ooh, and the same heavy hits from last time from 360 Arc Pounder as he goes wild and crazy from the very start. Knocking out Poison Stinger's main weapons. Poison Stinger trying to lock him up. 360 Arc Pounder pirouetting now. Getting locked up on the wall, and apparently he can fly. <laughs> I believe that's the momentum caused by his spinning that actually causes him to do that sometimes. Plus those tires are awfully bouncy. We've got Poison Stinger trying to get those heavy hits in against the tire. It's his only hope. 360 Arc Pounder getting real close to those cinder blocks now. Ooh, scoring the heavy hits though with over 3,600, 3,800 points. Ooh, and the cinder blocks come down almost scoring a hit on Poison, or 360 Arc Pounder. 360 Arc Pounder. Going one way and then the other, switching up his tactics to try to get different hits on each side of Poison Stinger. Poison Stinger's having a real time and trouble trying to get to those tires. He's only got two spikes left, two stingers left. Final round, 4,000 points for uh, Poison Stinger, 6,000 points for 360 Arc Pounder. Oh goodness, what's he doing? Ballerina over here with 360 Arc Pounder. The points are much closer in this round, but it looks like 360 Arc Pounder is still ooh, controlling it, but he almost sent himself flying outside of the ring at that last one. 
He absolutely has absolutely no control. He is just built for damage. There's no driving control necessary for that team. They literally just hit left or right and just keep going. We've got 360 yard pounder scoring those heavy hits against the tires on Poison Stinger. Poison Stinger sees an opening. He's going to try to take it. 360 yard pounder stuck in the corner now. Ooh, but that opening is closed. And now 360 yard pounder is spinning wildly out of control. Getting heavy hits on, uh, on Poison Stinger. Poison Stinger seems like he's struggling to get up to speed now. Those tires having taken massive damage at, by this point, I imagine. Ooh, and the heavy hits against those tires. You can really hear them hitting that rubber. Ooh, and there's that sledgehammer hitting against the other side of Poison Stinger now. Looks like 360 Arc Pounder is going to send itself into the cinder blocks, and cinder blocks go flying. And so does 360 Arc Pounder, almost getting locked up in the cinder block trap there, and he triggers the second one, but doesn't get hit. Looks like Poison Stinger's in trouble now. He's taking a lot of chassis damage. He's flashing in the red. I think two or three more good hits, and he's going to start losing that CPU. 360 over here with already 21,000 points. Poison Stinger's on fire. He's taking a hit to the battery. And that's at least one down. Don't know, don't know how many CPUs he's got in there. And another heavy hit from 360 Arc Pounder. It, it doesn't look good for Poison Stinger, but... Ooh. What a valiant effort. What a valiant effort by Poison Stinger. Woo! See, just like with Mangy Mutt, I, I definitely want to give him a lot of points for control because, as you know, with um, 360 Arc Pounder, all you have to do is hit left or hit right, and it just starts spinning in place, turning counterclockwise or clockwise. There's really no control necessary, so a very valiant effort by Team Megaton's Poison Stinger, but... With such a massive point difference, I, I think we're going to have to give 360 Arc Pounder the, def, the definitive win on that one. So I'll get that written down, and wow, that is the, let's see now, that is the semifinals of the Tournament of Robotic Champions, whoo, lightweight division, whoo, okay, so we've got some losers in here, and I'll try to get those into the losers bracket for... Um, either sometime this week or next week. I'm not sure if I want to wait until the tournament's almost finished and we're in the the grand finals with the last two remaining and then run the rest of the losers bracket to see who gets the shot at the runner-up position. So that was the lightweight Tournament of Robotic Champions semifinals. All right, folks. Well, that's all the time I have left for this one. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any helpful tips or suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comment section below. And until next time, good fight and good night.